Action. One of the biggest questions that I get when I'm demonstrating at the shows is how do I get my liner brush to work well for me? So today I'm gonna to give you a little mini lesson in lining, showing you the thick and thinness of the paint that you need and how to select a good brush. If you prefer a pencil when you're writing rather than a nice fat pen, you might want something that's nice and thin like this liner is right here. It's the traditional handle, nice and small, and fits really nice in the grip. You're gonna keep your handle straight up and down, so you wanna make sure that you know where your hand is gonna be. So by trying it at the store and knowing that it fits well for you, that's half the battle. The other brush that you might consider is something like a comfort grip. This one is a fatter handle and fits very comfortably in your hand because it's got two little dips on the inside here. For nice thin lining, I prefer a 10, an 18, or a 20 lot, lot but everyone has their own preference. If you're looking for something that is very small and detailed, like an eyelash or light fur or something like that, you might look for a liner that has something that has really small hairs, like this one does right here, quite short. I prefer a longer liner because I like the way that it holds the paint for me. I also like something with a little bit shorter handle and a fatter grip, and I'll show you why. When I'm holding my brush and I'm holding it straight up and down, it feels comfortable about against the finger on this side over here by having a fatter handle. But you might prefer one of the other liners. I'm gonna show you now how I line with my brush. I like to put a little bit of water out on my palette so that I have that to help me with some dilution later on. What you're looking for is a little puddle that you've pulled out to your paint. Rather than trying to dilute this entire puddle, I'm gonna create a little work base here off to the side and I'll always go back into this diluted paint when I'm working. So if I need to thin it out, I'll just add a little bit from my bubble that I have from the side. I'm looking through the paint to make sure that it's about the consistency of ink and that it's gonna flow really well for me. So make sure that it feels really fluid. I'm gonna wipe off my ferrule, which is the silver part of my brush here because I get a little water bubble that comes down later. It dilutes my paint and ruins my line. So you wanna make sure that you take an extra minute just to do that. One of the biggest secrets, I think, is the way that I level out my load. If I start my liner and I have that fat load that turns into the skinny line I always wanted it to be, it's because I didn't take time to level out my load. And it's an easy thing to do. All you need to do is either lay your brush down and lift it up so that it's level, or rotate your brush, rolling it in your fingers on your palette and rolling it to a tip. There your load is leveled. When I come over to work with my brush, however, I find that most of my students think that it's a pencil and they'll take it with a slant. What you need to think about is that you need to drag your tip in order to make the most amount of paint work in the best way for you. I need to have my elbow, my shoulder, and my wrist all working for me. So if I hold my handle straight up and down, I have the full mobility of that. The minute that I slant that, I'm completely stopped and contradicted here, especially with my wrist and my elbow. So by having my handle straight up and down, I not only get that mobility, I also have the gravity flow to help me. I always hold my handle straight up and down and I like to tell my students that it's called tip dragging rather than lining. So I've talked for just a minute. I'm gonna thin my paint out just a little bit more. I'm gonna level up my load and make sure that I don't have a little water bubble there. I'm gonna keep my handle straight up and down as I work and I'm gonna drag my tip. By dragging that tip and staying on the very tip and letting it make contact with your piece, my load lasts for an extremely long time. I'm still able to go ahead and get my thick and thin lines, but when I do that, I start on my tip, I let my hairs lay down flat, I bring them back up, let my hairs lay down flat again. You'll notice that the handle is not changed or adjusted in that stroke. It's in the way that I'm just laying it down with the hairs up and down. Also with stroke work, you, it, you'll find that it's really important by keeping that straight up and down how much easier that stroke is going to be for you. Those curly cues that you put on those little grapes are not always so easy or those scrolls that you do for your designing don't always work well. So by keeping that handle straight up and down you now have that handle and everything else working for you. One of the things that you can do to become a really good liner is just get yourself a piece of colored poster board. While you're sitting at the phone, if you just have a little water container out to the side and your brush, you're not adding any paint to it at all, you'll have an opportunity to practice all of your strokes and they'll disappear in just a minute. So it gives you an opportunity to practice without using any wasteful paint. It'll give you an opportunity to practice and be a very skilled liner. 
and it'll let you have the feel of what the water feels like so that you know that's how thin your paint needs to be when you go on to line. I hope I've given you a couple of chances today to get your liner brush back in shape and to do some really good lining. Have a happy painting day. Cut!